Hi hey guys, this is another video about building a rich text editor in C Sharp and today we're going to be looking at scrolling. Just before we get to that though, there's been a couple of changes in the code since the last video around this carrot position structure. Um, first of all, I've moved it out of the editor namespace and it's now used throughout rich text kit. And I've also removed the ghost X coordinate that was on here since it was only relevant to the navigate method anyway. So it's now a by ref parameter on the end here. So functionally nothing has changed, but if you're looking at this code and things look a bit different, uh, that's why. I've also introduced a text range structure, uh, which is used throughout Rich Text Kit as well, wherever we need to reference a text range, rather than having separate properties uh, in the editor for that selection range. Okay. So moving on to the scrolling functionality, the main mechanism that's used for uh, scrolling in uh, Rich Text Kit is the Skier Sharp's Canvas Translate method. So just to show how that works, this here is a Skier Sharp Canvas and it has a method translate. And we can just pass it a point. So let's translate up by 100. So you see now, if I run this, the content that's drawn by the document is translated or scrolled up. Uh, but what's not working at the moment is the carrot position is wrong and all the mouse and hit testing is wrong. Okay, now if you're trying to build something similar to this in uh, another toolkit, another UI toolkit, you'll have to either use features in that toolkit or manually do all that coordinate translation yourself. In GUI kit that I'm using here, it actually has a content offset property, which I can just set like so. And you'll see when I run this, it actually translates not just the drawing, but also all the mouse coordinate and sub view coordinate management. So you can see now the carrots positioned correctly. I can click and drag and all of that hit testing is working correctly now. Okay, so that's that's leaning on GUI kit for this content offset. Now, the other part of GUI kit that we'll be leveraging is what's called a scroll view. So it's a view that we can use as a super view for this view, and it will add on scroll bars. And the only real information it needs from the view is how big the content is so that it can configure the scroll bars correctly. So each view in GUI kit has a content size property and we just need to set that properly to know how big the scroll bars should be configured for. So at the moment, the only time the document size changes with uh, this editor is when we resize the editor and it rewraps the content. So all we do here is after we've reconfigured the page width, we call this update content size and it just sets the content size according to the measured height of the document. We're setting the width to zero because we're uh, word wrapping at the moment. Okay, so that's that's the main stuff we need to do in the text editor view itself. This is the uh, test program I've been using to run this text editor. So if we wrap this in a scroll view now and set its content view property to the text editor, when we run this, we should get scroll view functionality working with this text editor. Okay, so if I make this smaller, you see we get a scroll bar, the scrolling works. So this is manipulating that content offset property on the text editor view to scroll the content. And you can see our clicking and dragging, hit testing, all of that is still working correctly. Um, this scroll bar is bigger than it normally should be because I've scaled up the whole uh, window to make it a bit clearer for this video. Okay, so that's the basic scroll functionality working. The other thing we need is we need the view to automatically scroll as the carrot goes out of view. Okay, and the way we do that is with a ensure visible call. Sorry, wrong window. Okay, so this is um, the old move carrot function, I've actually moved most of this out of here and into this selection property. Um, that's part of updating to use these new text ranges. 
so this is the old move caret function and all I'm doing at the bottom here is calling caret view which is a sub view of this view that is the flashing caret ensure visible this is a GUI kit function which just walks up the super view chain looking for a scroll view and asks it to scroll itself such that this view becomes visible so that's all we need for uh, keeping that caret on view as we move around in the document okay so that's that's basically scrolling working. The final piece we need to do is a paint optimization. Now that we can scroll the document, it doesn't make sense to paint paragraphs that are either above the visible portion of the document or below. So I mentioned once before I need to do some optimizations to this paint method, which I've now done. And what we're doing here is we're passing in the top and the bottom of the visible bounds. So this visible bounds will be updated as that content offset property changes. Okay, so we pass that into the paint method and you can see the paint method now it does a binary search to figure out which paragraph to start painting from. It updates the selection range to be relative to that first paragraph that we're going to paint. It then loops through from the starting paragraph to the end of the document, possibly. We've got an early exit here if the paragraph we're about to paint gets past the stop coordinate. We paint the paragraph and then we've got a bit of code here just to update the selection to make the selection relative to the next paragraph just offsetting it by the length of this paragraph and that's pretty much it that's scrolling uh, working um, like I said I'm leveraging pretty heavy on GUI kit um, depending on the toolkit that you might be using to build something similar you'll have to do that uh, painting offset with the translate method and translate any mouse uh, hit testing coordinates that you're using but other than that there's not really that much to it okay in the next video i'm going to look at um, various mouse selection mechanisms i mentioned in the last video that i'd be looking at that in this video but i've decided to push it back and we'll be looking at that in the next video Okay, hope you're enjoying. Um, let me know if you've got feedback or comments. Twitter is the best place at Top 10 Software. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.